Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm uh, Chris Shea, the host of On Finding Peace, and this is the podcast where we talk about practical tips of finding ways that we can work every day in our desire for a peaceful lifestyle. And uh, we talk a lot about mindfulness and meditation and uh, other techniques that can be used to accomplish that goal. And for today's show, I'm uh, very pleased to have a guest with me, the uh, founders of Entwined Lifestyle. And we're going to be talking about how to improve our social connectedness and look at different ways uh, since we are social beings. And the big thing nowadays is all about uh, social media. Um, You know, how can we uh, improve the social connections that we have? So uh, I'd like to uh, welcome both of you to the show and thank you for being with us. Hi, Chris. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. We appreciate you having us on your show today. Uh, it, it's my pleasure. And, you know, I've been following uh, the two of you on uh, Instagram and, you know, really like what you've been doing and, and what you've been posting. And, you know, one of the things that, that I noticed was the uh, uh, part of the social connectedness, uh, you know, that uh, you work with. And that really uh, got me thinking that we need to do a topic on how do we stay socially connected in a world where, you know, it kind of seems like maybe social media is is not as social as maybe it's supposed to be but I don't know we'll, we'll talk about that um, but before we delve into there if uh, the both of you would like to introduce yourselves and tell everyone what it is uh, that you do sure I'm Jan and I'm Jillian and we are twin dating and relationship lifestylists uh, we empower men and women to connect in terms of building their charisma confidence and communication skills when it comes to and I do the same um we've been we've had our company for a little over two years now and so both of us have our master's in marriage and family therapy as well as certified coaches Mm -hmm. so that's definitely really benefit us to helping people really connect and build relationships with others great so your focus is all on relationship is is it just you know romantic type relationship or do you cover any relationships or? Well, our primary focus is on romantic relationships. However, our romantic relationships affect every aspect of our life. So we do mm-hmm. tend to delve into different areas of our clients' lives as well in terms of how it all plays out. So we come from a more right. holistic lifestyle perspective. Okay. So mindfulness would play a, a role in what you would do. Is that safe to say? Yes, it would. Okay, great. Um, kind of unique to have sisters and twins doing relationship work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have. I'm not the only one to point that out, am I? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have our own unique relationship as well. So it's definitely beneficial as us working, you know, with other people in their relationships. Like she said, we uh, do help people with their relationships outside of just the romantic, but. At, work relationships or their uh, relationship with their friends too, as that is all entwined within their overall lifestyle. So, yes. Right. Would that then be hence the name and twine lifestyle? Um, actually, <laughs> that's part of the name and how our lives are all intertwined, but we also selected a word that had twin in it in terms of uh, our, yeah. yes, that's kind of how it came about. Uh, Has so, dual I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Twins, dual meaning, I, I, I get the, <laughs> um, yeah, I had noticed that, 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 that was good. I, I was thinking the other entwine, not with the twin in the middle of the word entwine. So that's, uh, that, that's pretty cool. Um, so, you know, one of the things when we look at, you know, the relationships and, 
uh, you know, the relationships that we have, like you say, to each other and, and relationships to the people on the outside, where, where, where's all the social connectedness? You know, when, when you talk about that and mention that on your website, where, where are you coming from in, in the way you define that and, and what its importance would be? Well, as technology grows nowadays, I feel like social connectedness is actually starting to decline as everybody's connecting to say more or less online, but it's really the art of connecting is really not there when you're kind of hiding behind the screen. So we try to help our clients more or less get out there in terms of being present at the moment when you are interacting, whether it's with your friends, your family, or romantic partner, um, to try to really put away your phone and try to stay off social media or whatnot when you are present with other people that you've scheduled time to hang out with. Mm -hmm. do, do you see that change in, in society where maybe we're not being as social, although we think we're being social? Absolutely. You know, I mean, if I see my friends list grow, doesn't that mean I'm being social in my... <laughs> Well, you'd like to think that you're growing your friend list if, uh, or your new friends if you're growing that list. But in terms of really getting to know those people, how well do you really know them on a personal level? Most of the people we know don't really know us in terms of that list mm -hmm. that we're creating. So in terms of increasing our personal connections, I think you need to you know, branch out in terms of being more face-to-face -face interaction. I think also setting, you know, guidelines when you are hanging out with other people saying, hey, let's put away our front phones so we can have like a one on one conversation. And also maybe even saying like, um, I'm expecting a phone call. I just want to let you know um, I might need to take this. I don't want you to think I'm being rude, but I might need to step out for five minutes just to inform the other person that you're respecting their time, but also communicating with them to let them know like I'm not ignoring you or I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I do need to take a business call and just communicating that with other people. But I think putting away our phones when we are in the presence of others is really, really important. Right. It seems, especially with the younger generation, and when I say younger, I'm saying like teens, you know, starting to move up, that they are connected with these phones. You know, and, and I, I do work with teenagers in, in high school and to get them away from it, 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 it's like impossible, you know, and, and when you see them, they're in a social group. They're always like together in a group, but they're all on the phones right. in the social group. Are you seeing the same? And then what, what impact do you think that's going to have on kind of like the generation as they age? And is this just going to become the norm? And putting away the phone well, I isn't something? The, yeah, I definitely think it's the norm now for people to be interacting and hanging out, but everybody's on their phone, so they're actually not really engaged with their, their friends. Um, I don't think that's going to change right away. I see it as being mm -hmm. the norm for a little bit. Um, I think the biggest concern I uh, think about is like, how are these social skills that these kids or teens have are going to start to like decrease? So how are they going to go into a job interview and ask for the things that they need? How are they going to ask for a raise or a bonus that they, right. because they're so wired to the phones that they're no longer like conversing live with one another and really like engaging, like she mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they seem so versatile in that communication on the device you know so I, I, I do wonder where is this going to lead you know when we talk about you know romantic type relationships is this going to become the norm I mean are we going to see people out on a date sitting with each other both on their phones enjoying the date I mean is that going to be the norm <laughs> might as well just date a computer screen <laughs> What there are that? some. <laughs> what is that one movie where he like fell in love with a computer? I can't remember off the top of my head right now. I don't know. But... That he fell in love with the actual computer. But it's almost like what's real? What's the perspective of reality anymore too? It's like, what are we, are we living in like a fantasy world? Um, because we're no longer, we're losing that human touch 
in terms of like the emotional impact we have when we actually touch other people's lives and be able to share certain memories or thoughts and being able to like support each other, you know. Right. Are, are the two of you seeing this as issues when you're working with people who are, you know, having difficulty with relationships or starting out in a relationship? The, is this an issue yet? Or do you project it to become an issue? I have noticed it with some of my clients. Um, one client, she would tell me that her boyfriend would always complain that she was on her phone nonstop. And I said, you know, he's telling you something there. So it's a sign that something you need to listen. He's wanting more time for, you know, from you and interact with you. So we sort of need to listen to that because maybe you're not giving him enough time and that's affecting him emotionally, you know, in terms of him also being a little bit resentful towards her for not interacting on a, you know, evening basis when mm -hmm. they are, have their alone time after work hours. Did she seem to understand that or, or is that a foreign concept of these well, generations? But yes, now she, she, it took a little time, but now once we started talking about it and she could understand a different perspective and sort of put herself in his shoes, she could really then start to relate. And now she has definitely implemented change there. Mm -hmm. and, and it's interesting. And, and I hate to say this as a guy, but it's interesting that it was the guy complaining about that. <laughs> for the way around. I, I, maybe I'm being too stereotypical. I don't know, but. <laughs> well, I understand your perspective, but I do think men are less on their phones, I would say, than women are in terms of, because women would, can, are more likely to sit and write books in terms of text messages and whatnot, where men are a little bit shorter in their messaging. So I feel like men sometimes don't want to be bothered with the phone. It's more or less a hat where women are a little bit more into that connecting this through constant uh, communication. Right. Yeah, and I, I can see that, that aspect. You know, I, if I didn't have this business that I was working on, I wouldn't be as much on the phone as I am. And, and I admit I'm on the phone a lot. Um, but most of my social media really is the business, not the personal. You know, I, I think I have like one personal social media profile out there. Um, so yeah, I probably wouldn't be on it that much if I didn't have this side of it. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think we're very much the same way. Um, and you know, I think it really just depends on individual personalities as well too, and where people are at in their life today. You know, are they in a committed relationship? Are they fully like immersed in their work life? It's, or are they not happy at all? So they're seeking, you know, validation or attention from other people by really, by getting on the online platforms, you know, social media to mm -hmm. other things to fulfill needs that they feel like they might be lacking or not being fulfilled in other areas. Have you been finding that? Because that's something that I, I've been wondering about, you know, as a counselor that are we now using the phone where maybe we would have used some other avoidance, you know, techniques but now I can kind of do an avoidance technique without it looking like an avoidance technique because everyone's doing it. <laughs> right. I definitely think being on your phone can definitely be used as an avoidance technique to, you know, avoid whatever situ situation or scenario you might be in at that time. I feel like a lot of people might word vomit too on like Facebook versus actually taking time to get on the internet or speak to a friend and find solutions to what the problems they are facing. Um, it's like they almost just want to like tell the world and let go of their problems, but yet they want to do nothing mm -hmm. about it. They just want people to feel sorry for them in a way, it, you know, and it's, it's sad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially when I see a lot of the anger out there and a lot of, you know, the, the anonymous, uh, you know, just, going after people, um, you know, when you know, well, I would assume most of these people would never say those things if they were face to face with that person. Right. But it's and easy to do it by typing it. Right. That's definitely a problem is that you want to address things on social media, an issue or something that's upsetting you, but you're lacking the courage to address it with that person in person because everyone we're hiding behind screens now and, and the, mm -hmm. our social skills are going to definitely go down but 
if you just, if people saw the benefits of dressing it with that person, it could be resolved and that friendship actually might grow and deepen to another level just because you were able to get through that hiccup that you might've had with that relationship. Right. Now, not to sound too down on technology, and, and we'll, we will talk a little bit about some of the positives. <laughs> um, you know, because I love technology, to be honest. But, uh, but I, I wonder, could, could this social media and some of these technologies, you know, like uh, even this kind of platform or some of the other, you know, instant messaging type platforms maybe enhance a relationship? I mean, do you see that as a possibility or are you guys just like, no, we, 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 we don't want that in the relationship? No, I do think there are positives to the social media and technology nowadays, especially say your partner's traveling on the road for like a week or two due to their, you know, uh, career, then mm -hmm. obviously technology is going to benefit them in order to stay in communication throughout that process of why your partner is traveling on the road. So there are benefits to it. Um, you can meet other people, connect with other people from, you know, and keep in contact in other countries because of social media right. and keep that. I mean, for me, for example, my best friend lives in Spain. And so we keep in contact <laughs> via, you know, technology. So if we didn't have right. that, we would only speak every so often. Um, but yeah, I do think there are benefits to technology for sure. First, it's just a matter, it's like that balance. It's just a matter of how you use it and um, how much you're using it. I think it's good too. I think, I just wish more people would use, I think more face-to-face, -face, the FaceTime or phone calls versus always texting. Because a lot of times miscommunication can occur, but actually really utilizing what we do have available, I think to our fullest potential would be the best benefit in terms of communication and staying connected. Mm-hmm. So almost like, uh, so prior to this, when people would be on call on the landline, you know, if they were traveling, um, now, yeah, maybe if I can see my spouse, then that might enhance the relationship because we're seeing each other, not just talking on the phone. Correct. So kind of, yeah. Eye contact is really big for intimacy uh, and staying, you know, keeping those emotions and feelings connected. Um, connected. Yep. Mm-hmm where you don't get that in, in the text. Correct, right. <laughs> you don't get the voice either, because sometimes people, a voice can be soothing and comforting as well. So via text, yeah, you don't get face-to-face -face interaction mm -hmm. or you don't get to hear their like voice. Yeah, and mine personally is I can't type on the phone too well. So <laughs> if I get into a, a conversation back and forth, they're like so many steps ahead of me <laughs> and I'm still responding to so many behind. <laughs> like that, like, on your phone, but like dial up internet from back in the day, like yeah. <laughs> in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, Aww. it's coming. Trust me. <laughs> I remember those days. Those, those dial up days were interesting. <laughs> um, yeah. This wouldn't be happening on dial up days. <laughs> no, it would not be happening on dial up days. See the benefits um, of technology. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Um, do you think people are beginning to rely on this for their dating and relationship work or are people still going out to meet people? I mean, do you see a shift in the trends yet or, or is it still, you know, I'm going to go out to a club or a bar or, or you know, whatever it may be versus using the device? I think technology is still up there in terms of people connecting with others on apps. However, technology has also changed in terms of how I think it used to benefit individuals in trying to connect on dating apps and platforms to where people are frustrated with them because individual, mm. the options are so many that people actually aren't taking it serious when they do connect with somebody. So instead they just think, oh, I'm going to keep swiping and find another option. I'll talk to this person for a few days and see what happens where it's like, I think people are going to start to realize this isn't really working. It's not benefiting. So I'm going to have to kind of go back to old school methods and meeting people out in like real life. Right. So without naming names, because I, I don't want you guys getting in trouble, but so are, are you saying the dating apps that are out there, maybe not the best way to 
approach things, maybe the so-called old fashioned way of getting out in the community and doing things in the community may be better to, to meet someone? I think that apps are a great resource to have, especially if you are someone that works many hours or a very successful person and you don't have the leisure time to always go out and try to meet someone one-on-one. -on -one. However, I don't recommend, you know, our clients relying on it as the only opportunity or resource to actually connect with people. And we do urge them to go to different social events or hang out with friends and do more social gatherings where they can possibly meet someone face to face, because that's when you really learn some about someone and you can really tell in, immediately if there's a like connection right away. Yeah, you don't get that initial chemistry via text. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The same person, you get a sense of that person's energy, their personality, and you know, usually instantaneous, well, not always instantaneous, but you know there's like some sort of connection there or mm -hmm. not when you're meeting in person. You definitely know if you want to see them again. Right. But we have emojis. <laughs> <laughs> and how do they make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the emoji you send. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a whole other topic, but I, I, I you know, wonder where we're going with our language that now we, we boil language back down to uh, pictures. You right. know, when you think of, you know, our early humans started with cave drawings and, and now here we are back to pictures, you know, so. Right. Which is another way right. for people not to use words or connect. <laughs> and exactly. Yeah. Well, I think pictures can say more than actual words. So you can skip, you can, I think more emotion sometimes or true emotion can kind of be evoked more from a picture than from mm -hmm. an actual a message. It could, you know, but I, I think your other point is still true. You don't hear the voice, you, you don't get the inflections or if it's soothing or, or you know, whatever you, you are missing it. But yeah, a, a string of emojis that you can understand yeah, might, might convey a little bit better. <laughs> and who knows, might be deciphering that string of emojis into something else and start an argument when it was supposed to be a happy moment. <laughs> uh, I've gotten some emojis where you look at it and go, I, I don't even know what it is. You know, like it's too small on the screen. Like, I don't even know if this is a good one, a bad one. Uh, like, what do I do with this? It's all about coding. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so... If, if we look at social connectedness, um, you know, what, what are some of the things that you think is important or, or why should we be concerned about being more social? And, and I guess what you're saying is get out more versus looking at the screen more. I think oh. being out in social environments, we have a sense of belonging and that's very important for our overall emotional health and our self-esteem. So it actually gives us confidence when we're out in social environments, when we feel like we belong, whether it's joining a certain meetup group or a community outreach program, whatever it is of your mm -hmm. interest or hobbies that you enjoy, you feel like you belong to a group and that almost empowers you internally to want to do better or have more for yourself. So it really, I think, elevates our goals and what we want to achieve personally in life. It's only human nature to feel connected to others. Yeah. I, I would kind of think that was probably the goal with most of the social media sites when they first started. Yeah, you're probably right. It was probably to increase the social connectedness in communities and whatnot. Yeah. I don't know if it's working, but... <laughs> Um, I think it can work in terms of like promoting such as an event or something where people are actually are, it works when you actually have an end goal of actually being in person at some point. Right. You still yeah. need that one-on-one -on -one or like at least face-to-face -face communication to a certain degree at somewhere down the line. Right. Yeah. So what are the positives? You know, we talked a little bit on, you know, the positive for maybe, you know, a long distance type relationship or whatever, but do you see any positives in this or should we just toss the phones in, in dealing with, with the relationships? I mean, that, you know, I'm going to say toss out all of this technology. Don't tell me that. <laughs> but 
is is there any positives where relationships are concerned when we're talking about you know just technology it's not even just say like social media but i think especially in intimate relationships it's good to really be able to ask someone how their day is and you know especially if they're traveling for work um being able to share you know the pluses and minuses in our life so we have that support system um because that's what not only helps them, but it helps us too um, in mm -hmm. terms of like keeping our support system healthy. Because the only way we can do that is, is through communication at the end of the day. And sometimes it is through technology. Um, so it, I think it's definitely, you know, a plus that we do need to be socially connected, even if it is through our phones at the end of the day. Right. Is there any other way it can enhance relationships, do you think? Or is that basically it which might be true i mean i i can't think of any others that, that, that's why i'm i'm asking the question it's not a trick question i can't think of any others um i think maybe it can right. also help alleviate maybe uncomfortable emotions that we're having because we rely on our partner as you know someone to help us decipher and like break down some of those emotions and help someone elevate our moods when we are having a struggle so they can help us give another perspective pretty quickly mm -hmm. versus waiting to talk to someone else if we can't reach others um because usually our partners are the first ones there for us when we need to speak to someone right yeah no, and, and that makes sense and, and that would keep that connectedness going so you, you're, you're not waiting for them or turning to somebody else to you know, pour out whatever, you know, Correct. at the bar where, you know, whatever you're talking. Yeah, yeah, you, so that, you definitely want to keep that bond going with your partner. Um, but I'm trying to think of any other. Let's say I can't, but that, that's, that's why I threw it over to you guys. But <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> But maybe there isn't. I mean, you know, that that may be true, too. I, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> I think, you know, like, like the biggest thing, like I said, is communication and staying connected. And I think that's, right. you know, it's pretty simple at the end of the day. And that's, it does help us maintain those certain areas in our life in terms of staying connected with other people, especially loved ones. Mm -hmm. So what might be some tips that you would have, you know, to help people to get back out there, uh, you know, put, you know, the phones down or, you know, whether you're in that relationship or, or just get out of the house and go meet people. Um, what might be some practical things that, that people can do? And because I'm sure there, there's a lot of people who will be listening to this, watching this, who, who will be saying like, hey, th this is nice in theory, but <laughs> you're not getting my phone. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, so whether you are single or in a relationship, some um, ways to definitely get out there and um, build your community is um, see what's going on in the local areas, whether there's lots of meetup groups people can join or attend where you can meet individuals, whether they're more career-based or whether they are social gatherings. Um, we recommend also like taking up a hobby or even maybe learning a new language. You can take different classes, um, okay. learn to paint. There's lots of classes um, in terms of different hobbies that you can learn where you'll meet other people that you might connect with and might have something in common with and make a new friend along the way. You can also volunteer, donate your time at you know, local soup kitchens or maybe at an animal shelter. You can also meet people that way too um, by just giving back to other people in your community. Mm -hmm. I also recommend limiting how much time you are on your phone per day um, just to keep you more interactive in the present moment and living your life fully versus being, you know, glued to your phone screen and, you know, hurting your eyesight. Yeah, because if you don't, if you don't rely on your phone so much, then it will force you to kind of like go outside of your comfort zone and do something new. Yeah. It, it, how often do I see people almost get hit by a car because, you know, they're, they're staring at the phone as they're walking across the street or, you know, I, you watch people take a, a nice nature hike and they're staring at their phone and you're missing the, the beauty of the nature around you, but we're staring at the phone. Yeah. Yes, definitely. 
But now we're back to the gripes, and then this is becoming. <laughs> I think, too, even planning a little bit, like, travel or explore into different cultures, too, and meet other people that way is always, like, a great way to learn about other, learn about yourself in terms, because when you're on your own and you're traveling, you have time to really self-reflect, but then you also take the initiative to learn about other people, too. Mm-hmm. So some of the things that I've heard, and I'll use the nice counseling thing, friends of mine. Um, so if you're in a relationship and maybe you're on your devices and what about the excuse of, well, I'm reading the newspaper online. What's the difference of me holding a piece of newspaper and paper in your presence or sitting on this device, reading the exact same thing in your presence? So why is one a bad idea versus the other. <laughs> or are they both just bad? <laughs> I've heard people say, you know, well, the technology is just the new newspaper. It's the new TV. It's the, you know, and, and this is how couples have been. You know, you sit and read a magazine, you know, while your, uh, you know, spouse partner or whatever is there. And, you know, so I'm reading it on my device. What's the difference? I do think it's healthy for when you are in a relationship for individuals to take their own personal time and engage in whatever materials they enjoy reading. It's healthy for us to do that. We can't be reliant on our partners for our emotional health at all times. We need to have our own alone time and engage in whatever. Um, do I think there is a difference as opposed to reading it on a device or a, the actual newspaper? Um, I think it's a that's, the same, that's the same thing as saying whether you could read your book on a Kindle or whether you're reading an actual paper book. I don't really see the difference too much there. Um, it's whatever is probably more easy or like a personal preference. Yeah. If you're one of those people that needs to actually feel the material you're actually reading or if it's, if you're more of a tech savvy person and you actually enjoy technology because it's easy for you to just pick up your phone and read or your Kindle, whatever it may be. Um, I think it just comes down to personal preference, but how much time you're actually maybe sitting on your phone or if you're supposed to be actually spending time with your partner versus on your phone, right. that's a different story. Yeah. So, But would it be safe to say that you both would agree that if you're supposed to be spending time with your spouse, whether it's a, a device or a actual paper version of the newspaper, you probably shouldn't be doing either. Right, I don't. I agree. If you're supposed to be, if this is like your time to be like breakfast is your like time together, then yeah, I would say like that's something you guys have established as a couple. Then you shouldn't be reading at all. Right, regardless of the media. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I've heard that a lot. That's why I thought I'd bring that. Up. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think that there's any good apps out there or websites out there that can help enhance a relationship? And I'm not saying, you know, the ones that help you find a relationship, but if you're already in one, um, or is that not something that you would work with and, and find other means to help you in a relationship? It all depends on what they were wanting the app for, what their what the struggle was between the couple. Mm -hmm. I would obviously prefer in person in terms of whatever that missing piece was as opposed to trying to find an app to connect them, whatever the missing link is, that, whatever their problem they're struggling with. Yeah, because I right. think it's better to have the couple working together as a team holistically and working through their problem versus um, being referred to an app um, I think apps are great in terms of people doing their own research and finding their own uh, solutions to whatever they're feeling or facing. But I think when it comes to working with couples who are in relationships, you want to have more of that like live interaction between the two of them mm -hmm. to work together. Um, and a lot of it comes down just to like understanding how each other communicates. Um, because a lot of times we, men and women, uh, do communicate a little bit differently. So just understanding how your partner communicates and trying to align with them if your sh partner doesn't like to hear blah 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 this blah blah that or on and on and on you might want to keep your um 
point, very concise and nice. Mm -hmm. So they're actually actively listening to you because it, otherwise it might be emotionally flooding for them. And so they just shut down. So learning to understand how your partner communicates is really important. Right. Which you, you couldn't get through an app or you don't know of any apps that would help enhance that. Not off the top of my head. No, I don't. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Sorry. That's, I, I was kind of figuring that was the answer. And, <laughs> In some ways, hoping, but uh, um, yeah, you know, because uh, it, it is important, to, as you're saying, you know, to come together and, and learn about each other. Um, so for a moment, because both of you have talked about, you know, the, the holistic uh, aspect of, you know, working with relationships and, and what you do, what do you uh, do with your clients that's holistic? How, how you described that because you know that word gets thrown around a lot so just to kind of you know help people understand what is it that you do and then how is the holistic experience defined for what you do um in terms of when we speak holistically in terms of our clients like for instance i'll speak about one of our clients she struggles with um each, with her emotional state management and she will allow her mood, if she's having to struggle with whomever she's dating, she will allow her mood to affect her, um, the way she affects other people in her work environment. So that's what do we mean in terms of holistically, how it affects every aspect of her life. So she will allow her discord, whatever's going on in the relationship, and she will take that um, grief, emotional, like, discord and a, she places it on with her with her she might get in an argument with her boss because she's on edge or she might have a disagreement with a friend because she's you know upset she's letting her emotions flood every aspect of her lifestyle and so like the three main tasks of life are love work and social so we look at all three of those areas and try to find a, a balance amongst all of those because we need to like be succeeding in each and every one of those areas mm -hmm. to be fulfilled and be happy at the end of the day Right. And what I'm hearing from all that is back to the social connectedness, you know, that, that how I'm feeling, regardless of where it started, is going to affect the rest of my social connections Correct. Uh, you know, you know, within my sphere. Not always, because some people are better at containing their moods than others. But yes, more than likely, it is going to affect some other area of your life, whatever that issue mm -hmm. is going on. Yeah. So it goes back to the need for social. <laughs> yes, it does. I, I like how we go full circle. <laughs> it always um, comes back around. It, it does. You know, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Um, I mean, we've been social creatures since written history that we know about. So, right. you know, yeah. well, why stop now? <laughs> we shouldn't. I don't think, I don't think it's going to, I don't think there'll ever be a stop for like, um, Social belonging and right. I think that's that's just like in our nature. It's in our DNA. I don't think that's changing. And we, mm. I think we need communication. It's the only way we can get our needs met. And whether we have to use technology or we get to do it live face to face, regardless of how it's done, we still need it in order for us to seek overall like happiness in our own personal lifestyle, whether in a relationship or not in a relationship, but for our own emotional health. Right. So what I try to focus with this podcast is, you know, finding our peace. And I know this is a loaded question, but in a succinct way, <laughs> um, how do you think in, because this, this could probably be a whole other episode, but how do you think it is one of the best ways that couples can find that inner peace within their relationship? Is there an easy answer to that, or should we just move on? Having respect for their differences. A lot of times people struggle with not being able to accept their partner, um, yet they met their partner and they had these different quirks or awkwardness or they had these hobbies, <laughs> and they always think that that person is going to change. And yes, we grow as humans through our own self-improvement and development, but at the end of the day, we are still who we are and being able to accept that person for a lifetime is very, very important, but also know 
we are different and that's sometimes what makes us connect even on a deeper level is being able to appreciate other people's perspectives and be able to be open-minded to all things that happen in life and because there's always unknowns uh, that we face and they're challenging and we might get a different perspective from our partner. So appreciating their differences and respecting that is really important. Yeah, very true. You know, and, and I, I think I don't do couples work, but, you know, in talking to people who are having issues, that seemed to be one of, you know, the, the bigger issues is that acceptance of the other within their differences. Right. And, uh, you know, yeah, it seems very difficult for them to understand that, that, you know, people do change and, and how do we work with, you know, a, a change. It's also important, too, for those couples, even though they have their differences and their own hobbies in their social life outside their relationship, it's good for them to find something that connects the two of them together, whether, whether it's them sharing a hobby, whether it's bike riding every Saturday or um, learning a new language together because they're going to travel to a new country or mm -hmm. a golf lesson together, golfing, whatever it is that they enjoy, but as long as they find something to do together to outside their differences, that's what's going to keep them really happy and connected to because that's their one-on-one -on -one time that they know that they both have with each other that keeps them bonding right yeah so differences and find some commonality right. in what we do mm -hmm. yep. absolutely sounds wonderful but not always easy to <laughs> well um, the same with friendships or even family members there's all you're always gonna have differences with family members. You're always gonna have differences with your friends, but you still have usually some commonality between amongst everyone that brings everyone together to somewhere. Right. Online. Yep. So as we're kind of coming to the end of this episode, is there anything that we haven't mentioned that you think is important to get out there? Uh, you know, when it comes to social connectedness and you know, what we can do to become more social versus staring at our screens. I think, you know, use our phones to stay connected, but don't rely on it as the main source of being socially active. Um, get out there, have fun, enjoy life, and really, you know, build your relationships with the people that matter because, you know, you never know what's going to happen. And that's definitely, you know, what makes our hearts beat. I feel like each day is just feeling like connected to other people. Mm -hmm. So use it to keep in contact, but keep in contact in order to make plans to be present in the moment and interact. Right. So it's the tool, not the end all. Correct. <laughs> uh, um, so if people want to get in touch with you, uh, learn more about, you know, what you do or maybe even, you know, hook up with your services. What, what's the best way for people to find more about you? They can visit our website, entwinelifestyle.com, and they can either give us a call or shoot us an email. So we're always, or they can even reach out to us on social media via Instagram too, and send a mm -hmm. direct message. Okay, great. Excellent. Well, I would definitely encourage people to do that. Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of the issues, like I said, I don't deal with couples, but a lot of the issues that I'm dealing with when people come to see me individually has some sort of relationship issue, uh, you know, working within that um, and usually some social connectedness piece. So, you know, what the two of you do is definitely needed from what I can tell. So, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, encourage people to reach out to you guys and, and, you know, use your services. So, excellent. Well, again, I appreciate your time. Uh, this has been, you know, very enlightening. And, uh, uh, you know, if people do want to get away from their devices, do that after this podcast is over. Um, <laughs> but, you know, definitely uh, some good stuff there. So, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. Yeah, all right. Have a great day. All right, you too. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. <laughs>